Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asian News and in her the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday with Ray Sawyer Forbes. PM Modi meets Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky in a one-on-one meeting. UN team visit Bangladesh to discuss modalities of human rights probe. And 14 killed, dozens injured after bus with all Indians on board plunging into the very And now for all the news. Barely a month after visiting Russia, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday visited Ukraine and met President Vladimir Zelensky at the Martin Politics Exposition, where both leaders paid their respects to the children killed in the ongoing conflict. Modi's visit is the first trip by an Indian Prime Minister to Ukraine since Kyiv gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. The visit also comes at a volatile juncture for the war in Ukraine, with Ukrainian forces still in Russia's western Kursk region following their incursion, while Russian troops are grinding out slow but steady advances in Ukraine's east. Both the leaders also held delegation-level talks with a focus on ways to find a negotiated settlement to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. PM Modi arrived in Kyiv from Poland on board a Rail Force One train that took around 10 hours in the second and final leg of his two-nation trip. And the United Arab Emirates has accepted the credentials of Taliban-appointed diplomat Badreddin Haqqani as Afghanistan's ambassador, the UAE's foreign ministry announced on Thursday. This makes the UAE the second country after China to accept a Taliban envoy at this level. The Taliban have controlled Afghanistan's embassy in Abu Dhabi and its consulate in Dubai since last year, though without formal recognition as Afghanistan diplomats. A UAE official told Reuters that this move reaffirms the Gulf state's commitment to building bridges and aiding Afghans through development and reconstruction projects. However, it remains unclear whether the UAE, which previously recognized the Taliban regime, will officially recognize the Taliban as Afghan's government. While no other government has recognized the Taliban since they regained power three years ago, Taliban appointers are operating diplomatic missions in several countries, including neighboring Pakistan. Moving on. United Nations team will meet with Bangladesh interim government and other stakeholders starting Thursday to discuss the process of investigating alleged human rights violations during the recent deadly violence in the South Asian country, officials said. In a media advisory, the UN office in Bangladesh announced that a team from the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights will be visiting Dhaka from August 2020 to 29. The purpose of this visit is to understand their priorities for assistance in promoting human rights, the advisory stated, adding that Bangladesh interim government had requested the UN to probe the killings during the protest. UN Human Rights Chief Volker Tuck made a phone call to UNIS last week, stating that a UN-led investigation will be launched very soon to probe the killing of the protesters, according to UNIS office. The UN added that a separate fact-finding team will be dispatched to Dhaka in the coming weeks to conduct the investigation once details are finalized. Meanwhile, the interim government has revoked the diplomatic passport of ousted Premier Sheikh Hasina, who fled to India after prolonged protests. The government also revoked the passports of former ministers and ex-lawmakers who are no longer in office. The development comes amid the call by main opposition, the BNP, for Hasina's extradition from India to face trial for murder and other charges registered against her in Bangladesh. And Sri Lankan Supreme Court on Thursday found the country's president, Ranil Vikramasinghe, guilty of unlawful conduct for indefinitely delaying local polls seen as an unofficial referendum on his handling of the economy. However, it does not carry immediate legal consequences due to Vikramasinghe's immunity while in office. Last year, local polls were postponed, making the September 21st presidential election the first opportunity for voters to weigh in on Vikramasinghe's administration since he assumed office. The court ruled that the president failed to allocate funds for the local elections. 
Reacting to the ruling, Vikramasinghe said that he is not apologetic about the delay and said it was necessary to do that in order to address the economic challenges. Vikramasinghe, who took over after the resignation of Gotabaya Rajapaksa amid widespread protest over a severe economic crisis, is seeking re-election for a five-year term. And more than 13 people were killed and several were injured after a bus carrying 40 Indian passengers plunged into a river in Nepal. Reports suggested that the bus was en route to Kathmandu from Pokhara. Rescue operations are underway with a team of 45 armed police force personnel. Uttar Pradesh Relief Commissioner said that authorities are trying to establish whether anyone from the state was involved in the accident. Earlier in July, two buses also swept into a swollen river carrying 65 people. The death toll is likely to rise. Nepal records high mortality due to landslides and flooding during monsoon due to tough terrain and unplanned urbanization. The Himalayan nation this year is expecting more than average monsoon rainfall. Meanwhile, Nepal's new transitional justice law is an important step in the country's long journey towards accountability and reconciliation. Human Rights Chief Volker Turk said on Thursday, emphasizing the need for victim-centered implementation. In a statement, Turk noted that the legislation ends an 18-year wait for victims to know the truth and access justice following several failed attempts. This process will also help strengthen guardrails to prevent anything like this from ever happening again, he said. He acknowledged the bill's significance despite some provisions leaving gaps and ambiguities and stressed the importance of full victim participation throughout the process. It will be essential for the Nepalese authorities to ensure the full and meaningful participation of the victims in affected communities at every stage of the process, the statement said. The long-awaited transitional justice law, which is a major demand in the Himalayan nation, could help advance justice, accountability and redress for the widespread human rights violation and abuses committed during the 1996-2006 to conflict in which at least 13,000 people were killed and 1,300 went missing. The bill is yet to receive endorsement from the Upper House of Nepal's Parliament. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.